Welcome back to the Castle Grounds Apiary. Today we are going to be comparing branding irons versus laser engravers for marking your woodenware and beekeeping. Now this video isn't exclusively for beekeeping. Obviously people are uh, laser engraving and branding outside of beekeeping, but it is common uh, for, you know, hobbyists, sideliners, backyard beekeepers, not so much on the commercial scale. In that realm, you still see lots of stencils and paint, but for us small guys, um, the, the branding and the laser engraving is an option because you don't have so much stuff that it just doesn't make sense financially or from a time perspective. So, for the most part, you have two options. This kind, it's a, it's a chunk of brass or some other brass like alloy, not 100% sure, um, that you, you just heat this up and you press it just like a stamp and that heat will uh, make your brand just like cattle and all that fun stuff. On the other hand, we have a laser engraver. This can be used for things outside of wood, but it obviously can mark wood pretty decently. They both have their pros and their cons. Really boils down to cost, uh, speed, and flexibility. Those are the three main criteria you need to consider uh, when going with one of these or one of those. It's not, not one is going to be best for everyone uh, despite cost or whatever. So we'll start with the brand. On the cost side, this is about as cheap as it gets outside of like the manual burning tips, kind of like a solder, soldering iron, but they use it for art. I think Frederick Dunn has done some videos on that. If you're an artist, that's a great way to go, but I think in terms of cranking out production type work or having great repeatability, that's not a good option to consider. So in terms of this type of stamping brand, uh, this was $110. I bought this off of the website brandingirons.com. They're a pretty reputable company and uh, they definitely work. Now this is the cheapest version of this model. You can get some that have an electric uh, heating element that makes this a little more convenient and three times more expensive. So consider that. I think if you're somebody with 20 or less hives and you want to go with the brand, I don't think you need the fancy electric one unless you're just you get, unless you got money to spend. But what's nice about these is this retains heat for a while. So once you get this up to temperature, you can make multiple brands and then reheat for about 30 seconds and then make multiple brands. So you can get a lot of stamps or brands or burns made in a very short amount of time once you're heated. It does take about five minutes to heat this initially and then you could really get a lot done. One other nice thing about the brand is that based on the temperature you select, you'll get a different outcome. So if you want a nice light or gradient, you can do that pretty easily with a brand like this. Or you can leave it, focus, or you can leave it for the full duration and get a lot of good um, results. Notice this is a much flatter look you're not going to get a lot of dimension or texture with the brand because you have to remember when they manufacture these brands they do it on a single plane meaning it's it's flat all the way across the front there if that makes sense so you're not going to get texture you know stempling or anything like that um, which is okay probably for most people and I'll get into where it can be different with the laser engraver when we get over to that. So cost is low on these. Um, speed can be good after you're, you're initially heated. Now, if you're just trying to, trying to make one, one brand, you might be able to do it faster with this because you click a button and it's working, whereas you have to sit here and heat this for five to six minutes otherwise. And then... The third thing to consider is flexibility. Um, 
outside of shading and gradients that you can achieve with practice, there's zero flexibility with this. You've got one brand, one size, one look, and this is the only brand you're ever going to make with this, unless you want like a square, in which case maybe you can do something else with that. It does work well. It wasn't expensive. I really bought this just to test out, um, and the prices, like I said, I paid $110. That was back in 2019. So prices may have gone up since then, like everything else. But it does do a good job. It can, it can work just fine. But notice this is small. This is two inches by three quarter inch. You're not going to get a big, beautiful brand for hundred dollars. They make big ones, but it's going to take longer to heat. It's going to cost more money. Um, so just consider that. We're going to do a small brand, two by two inch by three quarter inch for both these to, for our comparison. Now, the laser engraver, you can buy these all over the place. They've been out for a while. I bought this one back in 2020. After experimenting with that, um, I decided to, to go with this. This cost me like $250 in 2020. I looked now today and it's over $400, which is incredible. I'm assuming that has a lot to do with supply chain problems everywhere because generally speaking, prices for tech goes down over time, especially this kind of low budget um, economy, Chinese technology, no offense, but that's just what it is. Um, but all that said, so it's $400 today, it's $250, you can probably find something in between. It's got a 20 watt laser on it, it's got like a 6 inch by 6 inch uh, bed or workspace, uh, printable, laserable area. Um, so cost is more for sure. Even if you got a steal on this, it's going to cost more than that. If you're making a small brand, um, time, time is, uh, it's tricky because there's a lot of variables. Um, the size really matters on a, on a brand this size, the size of the, uh, actual iron. It's, uh, it takes about four minutes once you click the button. Now you do have to have your artwork loaded or your logo loaded. You do have to have all your settings dialed in and that can take longer. But what's nice about this is once you have those settings saved, those are the same ones you can reuse over and over again. And yes, it does take four minutes, but you can just walk away at that point. You don't have to sit there and, and babysit it. And it's fairly low risk as long as you don't have children or family around that might have their retinas melted uh, by the laser. So let me bring you in close on this one. Let you see what it looks like. So this was my test today to kind of show you. You can see it's a little too dark. We've got some smokiness here. That's from actual smoke, like uh, burn off that uh, bled onto the on the wood there. And so what I did was I increased the speed and. What it does is it lightens the rest of it, but it keeps the thicker parts from being burned. But what you can see there is there's actually texture. And it's, 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 you can't really tell here. And that may or may not be desirable to you, but it is something you can achieve with the laser. And there are just, there are just countless settings in here that you can manipulate. Uh, your temperature of the laser or the power percentage, the speed of the head. Um, if you're familiar with 3D printing, it's, it's very similar to that. There's, you, you make, there's all these tolerances you adjust and uh, that will affect your final result. So these, these examples may not be as good as it gets. I just came out here and quickly whipped this up, but I've made lots and lots of uh, laser engraves so far, probably over 500 since I've had it the last couple years. And I've been able to, when needed, get really good results. So speed varies upon how detailed you want to get and do you need to make more because each one is going to get take less and less time as you go. Um, but yeah, the laser engraver does work really well. So what did I say? Uh, cost, speed, and then flexibility. If you don't already know, the flexibility with this is significantly greater. Um, after I did that, I also cranked out this which is just the same same logo, but larger. And here on a larger scale, you can see that the, the texture is much more visible. Now I ran it a little hot. You can see 
I probably should have turned the temperature down and I would have had a really, really nice finish with that. But, you know, this was just for dem demonstration sake. Um, hell, I could have made it say the dirty rooster was here or Greg Burns. I could put a picture of your face on my deep box. Maybe I'll do that. I don't know. But you can do anything you want. And what's nice about this specific brand of laser engraver versus some of the other ones, um, because there's lots of these on the market, and I did a lot of research before I pick, picked this one, but you can pick it up and move it all over the place if you want to. You can set it up on a hood of a truck. You can take it anywhere. It's very mobile, and it actually can sit on your surface. Uh, or you can just set it here and go to town. I do probably need to say that if you ever get and use one of these, you definitely need to wear protective gear uh, because it uh, will blind you, or so they say. I haven't tested that yet. So if I had to pick one, it would really depend on what I was doing with it. Um, if you just want to put a little touch mark on the sides of your boxes and you don't want to spend a lot of money and you don't want to have to worry about software, and all the other settings and stuff because it does take time to learn. Just get you one of these. This works. This 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 works great. This is almost foolproof. You do need some test wood so you can make sure you got your temperature right. But once you know it's hot enough, you really can't screw this up. This piece can take a while to do multiple things. You, you're not going to go and just stamp, stamp, stamp like you can with this. But you can put multiple um, pieces on the same run and program them all into the same laser so you can still set it and walk away. For example, I'll show you a little clip where I lined up a bunch of top bars. I think I could fit six top bars side by side in here and just have it run my logo down all in one, all in one process so I could just tell it to do its thing and I could walk away. So there are tricks for both. Now if I was using either one of these all day every day for my job, I wouldn't choose either one because neither of them are great um, for like constant use I wouldn't think there's something better but for the price they're both really good so um, if I forgot anything let me know I'm going to include a couple clips of this running just so you can see I'm not having it run here because the, the laser flash is super bright and over and overexposes the video and it's super noisy so didn't want to worry about that but that's kind of the that's kind of the comparison you're going to pay more money but you get more flexibility this is chimper chimper this is cheaper and cheaper, uh, simpler, and uh, but but limited in what you can do with it. You could probably tenderize a small pork chop, um, Jeff. That's for you. Anyway, if you have any questions, let me know. If you'd like to see something specific or uh, know more details about it, let me know. I can also include a link to another page where I kind of did a more in-depth review of this. If you want to see how to use this program, I'll probably even be able to find the link and put it in the description to this and this so thanks for watching